I have to tell them, everybody, we greet you in the name of Ahaya, Asherea, Ahaya, and his son, Yadche, Meshiaka, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruaka, Kedoshi. We thank you, and we're coming back on this Shabbat today. We bless you with peace and prosperity in the name of Ahaya. Uh, we thank you for joining us this day with Hebrew Readers Church. We hope this becomes your church home and that you continually grow in, in the comfort of Meshiaka, Yadche. Uh, today we're going to be going over the understanding of the calendar. Um, Brother Kafafo, you'd like to get started? All right. This lesson is to look into the luminaries to identify whether we ought to observe the sun or the moon to track the accurate calendar year and feast days. Uh, can we start in the book of Enoch, chapter 72, verse 1 to 2, please? All right. The book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven, the relations of each according to their classes, their dominion, and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, with Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he showed me all their laws exactly as they are, and how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity. Till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. So we see that Enoch was shown what's going to happen until the new creation. So we can be assured that what Ahaya showed to him shall be and is already. Because we've seen that the luminaries, everything has laws. Ahaya is righteous in all his works. Uh, can we continue verse 2, please? And this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, as it's rising in the eastern portals of the heaven and is setting in the western portals of the heaven. Uh, the sun was ordained for us to follow to account the correct days, the Sabbaths, the months, years, and feasts and seasons, which are the new moons. Let's read Jubilees chapter 2, verse 9, please. And Allah appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbaths of years and for jubilees and for all seasons of the years. Sun is that great sign. That's what we have to keep up with to make sure we're doing things according to the proper order. All right. Now the moon. We read about the great luminary of the sun. He's the head. He's the head of everything. And he is a he. is a male spirit. Right? Now, the moon is named Yareka. That's the Hebrew name of the moon. And the sun is Chimeshi or Chimeshi. Now, we'll look to see that she's also had a purpose that she had served. Can we read Ecclesiasticus chapter 43, verse uh, 6 to 8, please? He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. When it said he made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times. The moon has rulership over the night. So her declaration of times comes in the night seasons, just as the sun rules over the day. All right, can you continue reading in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 43, please? Verse 7. From the moon is the sign of feast, a light that decreases in her perfection. The month is called after her name. That is literally so. The word for month and the word for moon in Hebrew is Yareka. Continue, please. Increasing wonderfully in her changing, 
being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. Notice she is a sign of feast, and the month is called after her name, but the sun is appointed as the great sign for all events of times. As we read before in Jubilees chapter 2, verse 9. Now, we can't follow or make observations of the moon because it will lead us to error. Can we read Jubilees chapter 6, verse 36 and 37, please? For there will be those who will assuredly make observation of the moon. I would disturb the seasons and comes in from year to year, 10 days too soon. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day, the day of testimony, and an unclean day, a feast day. And they will confound all the days and the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. Now we see what was attested if we make observations of the moon. One won't disturb the proper year and all the feast days, the months and the Sabbaths by following the great sign, the sun, because a full year accumulates the 364 days as opposed to following the moon, which comes in 10 days too short, according to Jubilees chapter 6, verse 36. Can we look for confirmation that the proper year comes in with the sun in Enoch chapter 74, verse 9 to 10, please. Thus I saw their position, how the moon rose and the sun set in those days. And if five years are added together, the sun has an overplus of 30 days. And all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years when they are full, amount to 364 days. They are full, they amount to 364 days because that's a full year every time. It's the same thing in Enoch as was shown to Jubilee, which are the two accounts that we have that give witness of the times. The leader is the sun, so following it will keep a year in perfect justice unlike following the moon. Can we read Enoch chapter 74, verse 12, please? And the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly, so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day until eternity, but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days. It was amazing with this verse. We noticed it didn't make any mention of the moon bringing in the year with perfect justice. Because if you make observations of the moon, it's going to lead us to error. It's going to cause us to go astray. Hence, we are shown by scripture not to follow the moon or make observations of the moon, identifying the feast. There you see in simplicity of it, we have how we may know we are doing things in perfect justice when we go by the sun. All right? Now, We've seen in Jubilee 6 and 36, it showed how the observations of the moon were coming 10 days too short. So now we know why we don't make observations of the moon. Can we read uh, Enoch chapter 74, verse 14 to 16 to have confirmation of what was being told in the book of Jubilees, please? For the moon alone, the days amount in three years to 1,062 days. And in five years, she falls 50 days behind. That shows 10 days every year. She falls 50 days behind, just like Jubilee's account is. She's 10 days too short. Continue, please. I eat to the sum of 1,770. There is to be added 1,062 days. And in the five years, there are 1,770 days. So that... For the moon, the days in eight years amount to 21,832 days. For in eight years, she falls behind in the amount of 80 days. All the days she falls behind in eight years are 80. All that sounded so confusing, but the simplicity of Jubilees let us know. She falls behind 10 days, and it just keeps it really simple. She falls behind 10 days every year. 
Right. So it helps understand how all these moon calendars and whatnot is causing people to go off track and it's disturbing the times. So you have a count um, from the angel Uriel given to Enoch. You have the account from Yahshua to Moses of how the calendar goes and how we have to not follow the moon and how everything is set up by Ahayah's grace so that we may be guided. Enoch was also shown that the moon and stars would alter their order and not appear at their appointed times in these end times. Hence, the moon doesn't necessarily show up as a sign of feast like she used to. Can we close out with the book of Enoch, chapter 80, verse 1 to 7, please? In those days, the angel Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have shown thee everything, Enoch, and I have revealed everything to thee that thou shouldest see this sun and this moon and the leaders of the stars of the heaven and all those who turn them, their tasks and their times and departures. And in the days of the sinners, the years shall be shortened and their seed shall be tardy on their lands and fields and all things on the earth shall alter and shall not appear in their time. And the rain shall be kept back, and the heavens shall withhold it. And in those times the fruits of the earth shall be backward, and shall not grow in their time. And the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time. And the moon shall alter her order, and not appear at her time. This is why one may not find the moon in her proper place at the appointed time of the new moon and things like that because she would be out of her order in these end times. Uh, continue, please. And in those days, the sun shall be seen, and he shall journey in the evening on the extremity of the great chariot in the west, and shall shine more brightly than accords with the order of light. So through precepts, we've learned that the moon wasn't to be observed because she comes in 10 days too soon. And now we also learn that here in these end times, she would no longer appear at her times. So she's no longer a reliable sign for feast as she once was, according to the prophecies of Enoch. On the other hand, the sun still appears at his times and can still be trusted as the great sign on the earth for days and for Sabbaths and for months and for feasts and for years and for Sabbaths of years and for jubilees, and for all seasons of the years. The sun may shine brighter than the order of light, as Enoch said, but he still keeps appearing at his appointed times until the time of the false prophet, when that wicked causes him to transgress his order and appointed times by rising in the night. So, until that time, we can still have understanding of the year by the proper 364 days that the sun runs his course according to. Uh, continue, please. And many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order, and these shall alter their orbits and tasks, and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them. So the stars wouldn't appear at the seasons prescribed to them, and the moon won't appear at her times but the sun will still appear at his season and at his appointed times as the great sign for us, though he will shine brighter than his prescribed order. Therefore, we know by going by the great sign, we're still on track with Ahaya's calendar. His time will come when the son of perdition comes and does his miracles to deceive men. He's going to use the sun and cause the sun to sin as well. But until that time, we have guidance. So that's the understanding of the luminaries for us to know that we ought to follow the sun and not the moon for identifying feasts, days, Sabbaths, and years. All right. All right. So uh, praise the higher. We hope you all enjoyed the lesson. Um, if you have any questions about the topic of the calendar, just send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. And um, we'll definitely get back to you guys. All right. Shout out to Tyler.